In the next few videos, we're going to go over protein structure. In this video, we're going to talk about the different levels of protein structure. So there are four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. We'll start first with primary protein structure. This is the amino acid sequence. So as you can see in this diagram of primary structure, it's essentially just looking at a polypeptide chain and the specific sequence of the amino acids. So with the amino acid sequence, there's a couple important things to keep in mind. Number one, it's always given from N to C in terms of the order. So that means if they give you this peptide, alanine, arginine, glycine, that means alanine has the N terminus. It has its amino group that is free. Whereas glycine is the C terminus, so its carboxyl group is free. And this is important to know that alanine, arginine, glycine, this tripeptide, is not the same thing as glycine, arginine, alanine. And that's because in this second tripeptide, glycine has a free amino group and alanine has a free carboxyl group. So the order matters in primary protein structure. The second thing that's important to know about all of these different types of structures is what are the interactions that hold them together? So for primary structure, this is held together by peptide bonds. So peptide bonds, as we've discussed, they're particularly strong because they have partial double bond character. So that makes primary structure very strong. Next, we have secondary structure. Secondary structure is the folding of the polypeptide chain to form alpha helices and beta sheets. So you can see in this diagram, secondary structures of proteins. And you can see examples of the alpha helices where essentially the polypeptide chain forms a helix that is held together by interactions within the chain. And you can also see beta sheets. And in beta sheets, you essentially have different parts of the chain that are essentially lining up to each other to form these sheets. And beta sheets, they can be parallel or they can be anti-parallel. So essentially the peptide chains, the arrows can be facing the same direction for parallel or opposite direction for anti-parallel. Now, an important thing to know about secondary structures is when you look at the interactions holding it together, it's hydrogen bonding, but it's not the hydrogen bonds from the side chains. It's specifically the hydrogen bonds from the backbone of the peptide chain. So if you look at the polypeptide chain, there are uh, NH, a hydrogen bound to nitrogen. That's a hydrogen bond donor. There's also the carbonyl oxygen. That oxygen has lone pairs of electrons that acts as a hydrogen bond acceptor. So again, in the alpha helix and the beta sheet, it's the backbone hydrogen bonding that's holding the structure together. Okay, so now we can take a look at tertiary structure. So in secondary structures, we form these alpha helices and beta sheets, and there are some loops in between these structures. In tertiary structure, we're going to take these secondary structures and we're going to fold them together to form a globular structure. Now, there are a couple important things to keep in mind in terms of how tertiary structure is formed. The first is the hydrophobic effect. So all proteins are going to be in an aqueous environment. So in an aqueous environment, in water, the solvent for all of our cells and blood and solutions, the solution is polar. Now, if you recall for amino acids, the side chains can be polar or nonpolar and acidic and basic, but acidic and basic are also polar. So what the hydrophobic effect refers to is that nonpolar side chains prefer to be buried inside the middle of the protein during folding. So that way the nonpolar groups are not exposed to the polar solvent. Whereas the polar amino acids, they tend to be exposed on the surface. So that's one general way in which uh, tertiary protein structure forms. The other important part about tertiary structure are all of the interactions. So here, there's a lot. In general, tertiary structure is held together by side chain interactions. 
When you look at sidechain interactions, there's a lot of different opportunities or a lot of different types of forces that can be formed. So you can form hydrogen bonds because there are a lot of side chains with polar groups. You can also form just general dipole-dipole interactions that don't have to be hydrogen bonds. You can also have hydrophobic interactions. So this would be between the side chains of nonpolar amino acids. You can also have salt bridges. So where you would form a salt bridge would be with an acidic amino acid and a basic amino acid. So when an acidic amino acid donates a proton, it's left with a full negative charge. If a base accepts that proton as a full positive charge, so with the full negative and full positive charge, there's an ionic interaction between the two, that is the salt bridge. And also quite important, disulfide bonds. So among all of these different interactions that we're talking about, they're all intermolecular forces with the exception of disulfide bonds. Disulfide bonds is a covalent interaction. So that makes disulfide bonds particularly strong. And this is gonna be important later on when we talk about the different types of protein separation techniques that are run either under non-reducing conditions or reducing conditions. Okay, so last thing we can look at then is quaternary structure. So quaternary structure is the association of multiple polypeptide chains. Now the first thing you should take note is that not all proteins have quaternary structure. So here, let's take a look at a couple examples of proteins. You can see in this diagram we have myoglobin and hemoglobin. First of all, you can see how the secondary structures, the alpha helices and beta sheets are folded to form the globular structure and tertiary structure. Now, the difference between myoglobin and hemoglobin is you can see that myoglobin is made of a single polypeptide chain. So that means that myoglobin has primary, secondary, and tertiary structure, but it does not have quaternary structure. Hemoglobin, on the other hand, is uh, made of multiple subunits. It has four different subunits, and each of these subunits is a separate polypeptide chain. So the quaternary structure for hemoglobin is referring to how the four different polypeptide chains associate to form the protein. Now, in terms of the interaction that holds quaternary structure together, it's convenient because it is the same as tertiary structure. So this means that quaternary structure is held together by side chain interactions, which includes hydrophobic interactions, dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonds, salt bridges, as well as disulfide bonds. Okay, so those are the different levels of protein structure.